He asked, can I have two girlfriends? It's a virtual three-way. All right, besties, we got Cami back for this episode that has been heavily requested by Joshi and his little group of friends. So shout out to Joshi and co. I hope y'all love it. This is season seven, episode 24, Shakina and Chris. Neve has a beard, so this episode is already truly starting off on a high note because I 100% believe that every single man looks better with a beard. If you disagree, I need you to go and reevaluate your life choices quickly. So we start off with an email from Shakina, and the subject line is, I feel he is real, but is he lying? Oh, Lord. With the quickness, Neve and Cammy agree, hell yeah, he's lying, and we haven't even heard the circumstances of the episode yet. So we're not off to a good start with Miss Shakina. So Shakina is 31 years old. She lives in Moreno Valley, California, and she has been talking to Chris for three years. Chris is apparently 29 years old, and he lives in California. She says that Chris is a musician, and she is a big fan of his music. Girl, don't play. She says that she's embarrassed to tell them that there's another woman in the picture. So cheating on her, maybe, I don't know. She feels like Chris is hiding a lot of stuff from her, so she needs their help to figure out if he's serious about her so they can meet in person. And I feel like there were too many red flags in this one statement alone for me to believe that this situation is going to end positively. They hop on a call with Shakina and they make small talk that we really don't care about, honestly, aside from the fact that she has a son. Shakina then drops the bomb that the Chris she is talking to is in fact... Wait. It's Chris Brown. Ooh, mm -hmm. it's that. Who said that? Well, that's actually Chris Brown I'm talking to. What? Now, girl, be so for real because I refuse to believe that people come on this show and they genuinely believe that they're dating these celebrities. They cannot be this naive, they cannot be this delusional. To believe that they are dating these celebrities who refuse to meet with them in person, fly them out or anything. Neve and Cammy's reactions are honestly so spot on because what the hell is she even talking about? Run it, Chris Brown. Chris Brown. Yes, yes, that's him. Shakina says that she checked his voice and cross-referenced it with the voicemails that he left her and they sound the same apparently, allegedly. Shakina says that she has never considered the possibility that she is not talking to Chris Brown, which I personally think is even crazier than believing that you are dating Chris Brown. Did I lie? Shakina says that she messaged his personal Facebook account so she knows it's him, which is absolutely ridiculous. That is ridiculous. You are too grown to believe this. Neve asks her what she thinks about his previous relationships that have not ended well. And Shakina basically just says that people are too harsh on him and he's really sweet. For real. Okay, so the man who did this, the man who did this, and the man who did this is really sweet. Wake up. Got it. But Shakina agrees to come to LA and they hop off the call. The next day, Neve and Cammy head out to meet her at her Airbnb and they waste absolutely no time getting right down to business. Shakina says that a lot of guys have hurt her, but Chris helped make her feel like a butterfly which just like coming out of her cocoon and feeling beautiful. Which this would be a very sweet and a very genuine sentiment if she were really talking to Chris Brown and if she wasn't being catfished and consistently lied to, then maybe I'd be like, oh yeah, this is really sweet. But it's not because she's being catfished and she's being lied to. Neve and Cammie try to make her see how ridiculous it is to believe that she is talking to Chris Brown and it goes right over her head. Homegirl does not even catch the hint at all. So Cammie then clocks it and she's like, um, but Miss Shakina, Chris Brown has a public girlfriend. She asked Shakina if he ever talked about that. And Shakina says that she never asked because we have a good connection. I don't want to ruin it. Okay, okay, okay. I know what I'm doing. Okay, my fault. Yes. Okay, my fault. So I just need to get this, get this all, all sorted in my head. And I just want her to know that it cannot possibly be a good relationship if he is publicly cheating on you. He refuses to meet, he refuses to video chat, bookie butt. But also, it's not Chris Brown. We know it's not Chris Brown. Shakina says that Chris has a public girlfriend and then he also has another girlfriend named Takoya. Shakina said ass agreed to Chris having multiple girlfriends and then her and Takoya got to talking. Baby, the problem is in the mirror. The problem is you. Cami is doing too much right here. She's doing a little bit too much. It's a virtual three-way. But Shakina says that her and Takoya text and talk without Chris, but Takoya hasn't met Chris in person either. So you're both being catfished. You're two catfished sister wives. Go outside, touch grass, literally. Shakina then says that her and Chris, that they text and they talk on the phone all of the time, which makes this whole thing even more unbelievable because that man is always doing something. 
whether it's making a 60 song album that people are only gonna listen to three songs off of, being a terrible boyfriend, or being on tour, that man stays busy. She says that Chris doesn't tell her what he's doing at work, he'll keep things fairly vague and just say that he's stressed out. He's stressed out because he is trying to keep up the lie that he is a celebrity who he is clearly not. Lord have mercy. Chris has also never shown her his house, his cars, his chains, and he has never sent her pictures of anything, pictures that cannot be easily found online. But then she clarifies and says that he sent her some little dick pics. Just dick pics. Yeah, if you say it like that. She said that she's reciprocated and she sent pictures of her goodies right back. I feel like 31 is far too old to be believing that you are talking to Chris Brown and then be bamboozled into sending him intimate pictures. So at the end of her talking, Neve and Cammie are speechless. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Which almost never happens. The two of them always have something slick to say. But we then hear a voicemail that is apparently from Chris Brown and Cammie breaks it down to her that the person on that phone is definitely a 14 year old boy or a 20 year old woman. Shakina. That's not Chris Brown. It's one or the other, but it's definitely not Chris Brown. So Neve and Cammie head out and they are truly dumbfounded. So the next day, Cammie pulls up on Neve and Neve shows us his house slippers, which that's very much on brand, I feel. If you know, you know. The girls that get it, get it. And the girls that don't, don't. But they get right to investigating and they start by running the phone number and it is not registered to a name, but it is in fact a Michigan number. Cammie quickly says that Chris Brown is from Virginia, so we know it ain't him. Girl, we already been knew it wasn't him. We knew that. We knew that. From the very beginning, we knew that. So they search the email and it comes back with nothing. They then log into Shakina's Facebook page and they go to Chris Brown's Facebook page and in two seconds, Neve says what we are all thinking. Oh boy, this is obviously fake. They then go to Takoya's profile and they see that she is also up to her ears in Delulu, which is not good. Okay, but Neve then logs into his own profile and sends Takoya a message asking her to reach out. We then head over to Chris Brown's real Instagram and they see that he got a dog about three days ago, which confirms to us that this catfish isn't even trying to be a good or convincing catfish, which is really... <sighs> I think it's crazy to think you're dating Chris Brown. I think it's even crazier when you think you're dating Chris Brown and the catfish is putting like no effort into convincing you. Like you're doing all the convincing. You're doing the mending. Oh, so, so you doing the bending. So Takoya messages back and she can't believe that Catfish is really contacting her, but she seems to believe wholeheartedly that Chris Brown is her boyfriend, which is something. <laughs> They send her a picture of them as proof and she says that she can't call so they just continue to message and she confirms girl i say confirms like this is really him she confirms that chris brown is her boyfriend and she believes that they've talked over the phone so she knows it's him basically the same song and dance that shakina was having so they stop talking to her thanks her for her service her time whatever neve goes into full tinfoil hat mode he questions if Takoya created the fake profile because she's into girls and she isn't out of the closet and she's using this as a way to explore her sexuality and got into a relationship with Shakina and is just unsure of how to come clean but all of the feelings are real. So Neve and Cammie head over to Shakina's place to fill her in on what they found and I just know that this is not going to go well. Neve's beard is really distracting me besties, I'm not going to lie to you. It makes me wonder why he continues to shave it off. I think he looks so much better with it. Period! But that's just my opinion. So Cammie is really just giving homegirl the hard truth she needs to hear because why did she tell Shakina that she is doing more work to convince herself that this is Chris Brown than the catfish is doing to convince her that this is Chris Brown? And if I were Shakina, I would be on the floor crying, shaking, throwing up and screaming because I would have realized by now that I am truly Boo Boo the fucking fool. And I'm about to continue to portray myself as Boo Boo the fucking fool on national TV for everyone to see. Are you not in shame? So they show her the picture of Chris Brown with his new dog and Shakina says that he never mentioned it, which again, confirmation that she is not talking to Chris Brown, but we already been knew that. So Neve and Cammie just make it clear once again that Chris Brown is not at all who she is talking to. That the real Chris Brown is not the person that you're talking to. But Neve then honestly, very sweetly, makes it clear that they are here to help her and he wants her to essentially understand how she heavily contributed to her own delusion. He's like, girl, this is not a situation of you getting duped so good and they're doing such a good job, like the Birdman situation. No girl, you did this to yourself. But Shakina is clearly still not stating that she doesn't believe that she is in a relationship with C Breezy, which is alarming, but we move. 
So Neeb then tells Shakina his tinfoil hat theory, and Shakina says that she would be really upset if Takoya is the person behind all of this, especially since she sent private pictures, and she doesn't just send them out all willy-nilly like that. And this is concerning to me. If I'm somebody who doesn't take coochie pictures, who doesn't send coochie pictures, that I'm going to be delusional enough to send pictures of my cootie cat to a very clearly fake Facebook page. I'm just not going to do that. So Neeb then gives Chris a call and it goes right to voicemail so Neve does what Neve does. Yo, see Breezy, it's your boy Neve. He then asks Chris to give them a call back and it's just so crazy to me that we have to keep calling this catfish Chris because it's been evident from the start that it's not Chris Brown but we don't have any other names. So Chris it is. So Neve then gets a very dramatic text from a different number than the number he called but this number also has a Michigan area code so our catfish is definitely in Michigan. They claim to be a friend of Chris. They claim that Chris will never do the show and he is never gonna come clean. Girl, what the fuck are we even talking about right now? Well, like, this is pissing me off. Why are you wasting our time? So we then get another message where the person claims that they are sitting next to Chris so they can't talk. But Chris is talking about the message and he plans on ghosting them, so they need to come to Lansing, Michigan as soon as possible. That's suspicious. What the fuck are you even talking about right now? What the, what the actual fuck are we talking about right now? Because all of these dramatics, it's just too much for me. And that's coming from a girlie who loves and appreciates dramatics. I appreciate a good drama, but this is just too much. And Cami literally clocks it. And she says that this sounds like the beginning of every horror movie ever. And it truly does. So Neve sends a message back asking how they know that this is legit and that Chris will show up. And the friend of Chris Brown, which sounds ridiculous to say, essentially says, trust me, bro. Bitch, go to hell. <sighs> I don't think there could be anybody that I trust less in the world in this moment than this person. Okay, absolutely not. But they have no other option, so they decide that the next day they'll fly out to Michigan and just kind of take it from there. Shakina says that she is ready to finally let go of the fantasy and find out the truth and thank God. Thank goodness gracious, because it only took half the damn episode for you to come to this conclusion when we have been telling you from the very start that you are not talking to Chris frickin' Brown. But our besties then land in Lansing and Neve quickly sends a message to the friend of Chris to get shit on and poppin'. But surprisingly, they respond right away and they send back an address. They go to Shakina's room, they pick her up and they head out. So we pull up at the house and there is someone waiting in the driveway, which is very ooky spooky. I don't like that. They're literally standing like this emoji. It's giving scary. But the person in the driveway's name is Trucosi, and she says that Chris is inside the house, and Neve is like, come on now. Come on now, you- But not Chris, Chris. But Trucosi says that she just wants everyone to follow her into the house, and before they get inside, Homegirl says, I just want you to know that I love you, that Chris loves you, and Chris loves you more than any girl he's ever talked to, and then tells everyone to go easy on him. Do you hear yourself? What the actual fuck is going on? This whole thing is just confusing and scary because what is really going on here? Thank God they didn't just follow her into that house because it's literally giving psychopath. It's giving serial killer. I love you. Are you the catfish? Are you about to just walk back out and act? What's happening? But everyone is just so confused and we can see that the door to the house keeps opening and closing and opening and closing. So we're just all standing here awkwardly before Neve decides to just walk up in their house like he owns the place. He foregoes the police not completely, which is definitely a bold choice for him. But Trocosi then comes back outside with another girl. Trocosi introduces the girl as Chris instead of her real name, John Isha, which is definitely a choice because why are you talking about, oh, this is Chris? That's not Chris. We know what Chris Brown looks like and that ain't him. Trocosi says that she was only involved in the plot as side characters, but she was never Chris, which is crazy because why would you do that? Quickly. But Janisha then says that at first talking to Shakina was like a joke, but Neve isn't accepting this answer at all. And he asks her how long she has had the profile and homegirl has had the profile for six plus years. That's insane. And she says that she has been talking to people longer than she's been talking to Shakina, which is also insane. Cami then brings up the nudes and Janisha says that she wasn't accepting them from other people. And I personally don't believe that for a second, because if you were accepting them from Shakina, why would you not be accepting them from the other women who you were talking to and the other women who you were talking to longer than Shakina? What's not clicking? Mm -mm. Janisha then gives some half-assed apology. Um, I can't, it's just, can't explain it. 
I'm sorry. And Neve doesn't accept it. And me personally, I wouldn't accept it either. And then he tries to focus accountability onto Tricosi. Tricosi says that when she found out that all of this was going on, she tried to get Johnisha to stop. But, you know, I didn't want to end our friendship because of it. Which is confusing to me because how do you go from, yeah, I'm trying to get her to stop to then joining in on the deception and the lies? Like, were you also seeing the goodies? Were you also seeing the nudes? Like, what were you gaining from this whole situation? It's just, I don't know. It's weird. It's all giving very weird and very like, something about it is so unsettling. But Janisha then tries to act like she doesn't have feelings for Shakina and Neve tells her to spill the tea. Like, literally, he says, spill the tea. Spill the tea. I'm about to add that to my soundbite collection because thank you very much, Neve, for your service. But Janisha then apologizes for lying and says that bullying destroyed her self-esteem. Okay, I want to make it so clear. Bullying is a horrible thing. That is a horrible thing and it can have terrible long-lasting impacts on somebody's mental health, their self-esteem, their self-worth, their overall image. I definitely understand that. However, it does not justify or explain catfishing in general, but especially catfishing as Chris Brown. Like, let's be so fucking for real, please. But Cammy then says basically exactly what I said, and me and this girl are on the same wavelength, and I love that. It's gonna be so much fun when we co-host together. Putting it out there in the universe. But Shakina tells her that she should have just been honest and came clean before walking to the car in tears. Cammy gets in the car with her, and it's clear that she is devastated, and this honestly, it did break my heart, but in like a very weird way because yes she was absolutely foolish she was absolutely the biggest fool for believing that she was talking to chris brown she was definitely in love with chris brown but chris brown was not in love with her but her feelings were truly invested and she is really heartbroken in this moment <laughs> so i can feel for her even through all her stupidity i feel for her but Tricosi and Neve walk to the car before Janisha goes back into the house. All these names are really, they're very unique, but it's just like trying to remember who is who and who is doing what is just like messing with my brain. Also, there's fucking heat. It's like 38 degrees today Celsius and it's just, it's too much. Okay, but anyways, Tricosi gives what I perceive to be a genuine heartfelt apology. I just really want to tell you how I'm sorry I am. You know, I hate to see you cry and stuff like this. But also with how emotional she is delivering this apology in comparison to John Nisha, I really do believe that Tricosi was more involved than she is willing to admit to. And it's just confusing because I feel like if I found out my bestie, my best friend is catfishing bitches into sending nudes, I, it's not a friendship I want to keep. That's not a friendship I want to continue to have or sustain. Like I'm not going to be worried about losing you because you have no moral compass and that does not make for a good friend anyways. But Neve then gets in the car and he encourages an open and honest conversation. So the trio head into the house to speak with Janisha. Janisha then goes in depth with her bullying, which began in about the third grade. And she says that catfishing gave her the attention that she never had. And obviously catfishing as Chris Brown is gonna give you even more attention. But Janisha actually wrote Shakina a letter. So she reads it out and she says that their connection was real. She says that she was really in love with Shakina and that she's praying that they will stay in touch and Okay, this girl to me just seems very emotionally detached, which makes me feel bad for her. But again, it's also very scary. It's, I think, the thing in this situation that makes it all feel very unsettling. But Shakina makes it clear that she is willing to be there as a friend and a support, which is very big of her because I don't think I would have ever offered this to anybody who did me this dirty, me personally. But then I also feel like Shakina was feeling bad for everything that Janisha had gone through, so she felt like she needed to offer and extend that, even though she really didn't. But Janisha says that she now needs to come clean to everybody and then delete the profile. So Neve then turns to Shakina and tells her to stop being so delusional so she can meet somebody amazing because that is what she deserves. And honestly, that is what she deserves. And I appreciate the tough love coming from Bearded Neve. It's really giving 10 out of 10 this episode. No notes from me which is a first because I usually have lots to say about what the fuck Neve does. However, comma. Janisha and Shakina hug and then we head out. Neve and Cammy just stay trolling as they leave. You get yourself a real man. Maybe DMX this time. And I love that they were able to make something so heavy and heartbreaking, lighthearted and fun at the end. But in our little two month update, we find out that Shakina has started dating again in real life, but she hasn't heard from Janisha, which I personally feel like is for the absolute best. And Janisha says that she has in fact come clean to everybody. She's deleted the profile and she says that she's working on herself so she will never catfish again. And while I don't know if I believe her, 
I hope that that's the truth. All right, everybody say thank you to Bestie Joshi for requesting this episode over and over and over again. If you guys want to request an episode, you can always send me a DM on Instagram. You can also leave it in the comments. I literally, I check both. I check both and I try to respond to as many people as I can. I love talking to y'all. It's so much fun. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting. Thank you for all the love. Make sure to like the video, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you're aware of every single time that I upload. Make sure to let me know your thoughts, your feelings, and your opinions down in the comments below. And besties, leave a little plant emoji because I keep promising a plant tour and I was just dealing with the worst case of pests. And I'm now, I found something that works, but I think the thing that works might also be not great for my plants. So they're all going through rehabs. Send your prayers, put a little plant emoji down in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video.